What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are going to talk about our thoughts on how to handle a bad training session or class. Doesn't always go well, does it? Not, uh, not every time. Yeah. But you know what does go well? The intro here for our martial arts radio episodes. A few things that you should keep in mind. One, if you want to know all the stuff that we do, go to whistlekick.com. We've got a store. You can use the code podcast15 to save 15%. We've also got a separate website for this show, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's where you're going to go there. You're going to sign up for the newsletter. You can check out every episode we've ever done. Lots of good stuff. Now, if you want to support us, if you want to help us out, yeah, you can buy something. You can sign up for newsletters. You can tell people about social media. But here are a few things you might keep in mind. We sell books on Amazon. We have books that are kind of collections of podcast episodes. We have the Martial Artist Handbook. I even wrote a novel at one point that's rooted in the martial arts. You can check out all that stuff there. But if you want the whole list, all the things you can do to support us in our mission to connect, educate, and entertain the martial artists of the world, go to whistlekick.com slash family. It's, a, it's not a, a website a page that you're going to be able to click to find. You're going to have to type it in. We put that little bit of a hurdle in front of you because we give you good stuff there. And we want to make sure nobody stumbles on it accidentally. It's a, it's a little bit of self-select, mm -hmm. maybe not self-selection. It's a little bit of selection bias. Yeah. Okay. So this is an interesting topic and you came up with this one. Yeah. And I absolutely love it because this is one of those, I don't think myth is the right word, but I remember early on in martial arts radio history, we, this, this is long before you even, mm -hmm. I was shocked because we had guests coming on talking about how they needed to take a break. Yeah. That they took a break for, you know, a week or a month or sometimes longer. And I remember feeling like this was this <clears throat> deep, dark secret in martial <laughs> arts that many of us feel that way at times, maybe even most of us, but we don't talk about it. Yeah. Because if I say, you know, I, I need to take some time off from training. I am I am considered an outcast. Yeah. And I think this is very similar. This idea that not every class can be the best by definition. Yep. And if you're continuing to push boundaries and get more and more out of a class, there's always going to be outliers mm -hmm. on either end of the spectrum. You're going to have a bad class. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that and answers your question as to whether or not the screen is going to go gonna turn on. You talk and all <coughs> no signal detected. Um so, yeah, and it could be a bad class in terms of you didn't get out of it what you wanted to. Yeah. It could be a bad class as in you worked on things maybe you don't like or you just didn't perform at your best. Um, or you're distracted. Or, yeah, it's absolutely. You didn't realize you were getting sick. You didn't realize your knee was still feeling funny from last who, week. Who knows? Yeah. So many possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. So what, so what do we do, right? Like, do we need to state the problem anymore? I think everyone no. kind of gets and, and what I would we're be talking about. And I would be surprised if every single person listening hasn't had that happen before. I, I, I would argue that if you're listening to us say this and you say, Jeremy, Andrew, I've never had a bad training session. Maybe they've only done one class. I don't think you're being honest. Or they've only had one class. Or they've only had one class, yes. One of one. Because let's face it, as we progress, mm -hmm. things should get better. Not only should our skills become better, not only should our mindset become better, but our ability to train should get better. And if your ability to train gets better, you're going to have inputs into that system that is you training as a martial artist yep. that are not your own, right? Mm -hmm. Whether or not it is your own class and you are determining what's going on. There are other people involved mm -hmm. unless your training sessions are you training you exclusively. There is outside influence. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it is you training you exclusively, mm -hmm. your body will not always be in the same state. Yeah. And let's, let's be honest. The, the bad class could also be, you just left class and said, I really didn't learn anything today. Like, you know, it, it might not have, it might not be that you did a bad job, but you may just leave saying, "Why did I come to class today?" Like, uh, like uh, you know, people could consider that a bad class too. And I, I get should that. have just stayed home. Today. Yeah, yeah. 
All right. Now, we're not talking about what to do beforehand. We're not talking about whether or not you should come to class. We're not talking about how to prepare for a class. That's a whole separate set of subjects. And maybe we will tackle those at some point. If you if you want us to dig into some of those, you know, let us know. We appreciate the feedback. Yep. We're talking about what to do on the other side. After. And I think that it is for two main reasons. Mm -hmm. One, were you wrong? Did you actually get more out of class than you realized and you need to think about it in a different way? We'll mm -hmm. unpack that. Two, setting yourself up so next class is better. Yeah. Because if you walk away with it feeling too poorly about yourself or, or something that happened, quite often involves another person. Often. Right? You are less likely to get more out of the next class, maybe even show up, etc. And I don't think either of those circumstances are ideal. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Have you had this happen recently? Um. I would say it happens not, okay, not the bad class that I walk away from class going, oh, I didn't do well, blah, blah, blah. But there are, but oftentimes I will leave class and have a thing in my head like, I didn't really do anything today. Like the class was more about me doing more instructing or helping mm. than me learning. And because I'm not the main instructor at my school. Right. And so there have been times where I will leave and go, well, I didn't really get anything out of class today. Yeah. Um, and so that happens. So let's take that as an example mm -hmm. and reframe it because we know that our audience does skew a little bit towards more experienced martial artists. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of school owners. We've got a lot of people who are going to do at least some teaching. Yep. And one of the common bits of feedback that I hear from people when they teach, especially if they're newer at teaching, is that they're not getting as much out of their training time. So I suspect spending your class teaching others for a lot of newer instructors, especially if they're not school owners, mm -hmm. they're going to have some of that, that feedback, that reluctance, you know, like, I feel like today was all about everyone else. And I'd like it to be about me, maybe not 100% of the time, but I'd like it to be about me a little bit. I didn't get to work on anything. Yep, sometimes that happens. Right. So if we look at those two things that we, we said, can you reframe it? Mm -hmm. And can you prepare better ne for next time? How could we reframe that? How could you look at that class in a different way? So you're... For, for me, I often, when I start to feel that way, I start to remember that, I wasn't the only one in class. Like you mentioned earlier, like my being there made a difference in someone else's training. Mm -hmm. And I helped promote this art that I love mm -hmm. with someone else. And I take comfort in that. That helps me. Like I, I, I enjoy that aspect of it as well. And it, it is often said that you learn more teaching than you do by doing mm -hmm. anyway. And so sometimes it's a, it's a matter of me just going, okay, you know what? It's okay today that, that we didn't work on the form that I'm currently working on. That's okay. Like I can still do that on my own at home. Mm -hmm. um, but I helped someone else progress. And for me, that's uh, uh, I take comfort in that. Yeah. We did an episode, and it's probably the episode I've referenced the most over the years, years ago. And ironically, I remember where and roughly when I recorded it. I recorded it in the car. It was called Martial Arts as Service. Mm-hmm. And it is something I've gone back to many, many, many times in the way I look at martial arts and training. And, and there's another example of mm -hmm. it. You provided something to students in your school in a similar way to what was provided to you Absolutely. by your instructors yep. over time. That's number one. Number two, I could look at it and say, did you get at least a little bit better teaching the things that you taught? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The answer is probably yes, mm -hmm. even if it's a little bit. And remember, the longer we spend training, the smaller the increments of progress. Oh, yeah. There is no way I'm going to step into a class that I'm in with a style instructor I've been training in, same material for 20 years and come out with huge leaps, revolutionary ideas and yeah, pro progress, absolutely. every class. Yep. That's white belt stuff. 
It's part mm-hmm. of why I love being a white belt because it's like, oh, my mind's getting blown every day. It's great. <laughs> doesn't happen consistently as we get up there. So we've got to look at smaller increments. We've got mm-hmm. to look at those things. Another thing that I would say is, and this, this is both reframing and preparing. What if you're going to go in next class? What if the same expectation is made of you that you are teaching? Can you challenge yourself as an instructor? Mm. We often step into class and we say, okay, I'm going to get better at this form. I'm going to practice a few of these techniques because when I spar so-and-so again, I want to get better at that. Right? We're used to that as students. What about that same mindset as an instructor? I know so-and-so is struggling with this thing, this thing. form, yep. this technique. You know they're still going to struggle with it next time. Mm-hmm. Are there people you can call to say, I have a student struggling with this. Do you have any feedback? Can you come up with other ways that you can present that material? Could you reach out to them and say, hey, I've been thinking about it. I've got a suggestion on how you might practice this on your own and we can work together on it next class. Interesting. Yep. Right? The We often draw this very thick line between instructor and student. Yeah. And we're, these deviations are actually kind of interesting. I hadn't expected we would go to these places. I don't see them as two separate things. Yeah, they're very linked. If uh, and, and here's my example. Most traditional martial arts line people up by rank, right? We've got mm-hmm. the higher rank students towards the front of the room. They are closer to the instructor. Mm-hmm. Are you telling me that if you're in the second row, you are not looking at the first row people to see what they're doing, how they're doing it? You are indirectly teaching them. You are not maybe determining the curriculum of the class. You're maybe not choosing the drills, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you are modeling the the movements, the the behavior in such a way that other people are learning from you. That's blurry. Mm -hmm. On the other side, if you're the instructor, you should be demonstrating at least some of the things some of the time. Andrew, tell me that even, even now you've been teaching a lot of things, martial arts and non, for quite a few years. Yep. Tell me that when you demonstrate something in front of a class full of people you know and have been teaching and working with for a while, that you are not still feeling a tiny bit of pressure <laughs> on your shoulders. And there, I, we'll fix that for the next episode to perform whatever that is as best as you possibly can. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's uh, oh, a, a very nice scene. Nice. Apparently yeah. we get that now. Um, for those of you only listening, you get to miss out on our cool backdrop. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I've often f- said that I am generally nervous when I'm performing, whether it's performing, um, drumming in front of a judge or, or, you know, performing a drum set with a band somewhere like I'm nervous. Um, If I am in front of a class teaching to some degree, I'm a little nervous. Right. right? And, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I have heard people say, there's no reason to be nervous. You shouldn't be nervous. Uh, No, there's nothing wrong with being nervous. Nervous is a nerves means you care. Nerves mean you care and nerves can keep you focused. Sure. There's nothing wrong with that, but you're absolutely right. Um, you know, if I have to perform something in front of a, a, a class that I'm teaching, I want to make sure I'm doing it correct so they learn it the right way. Right. All right. So let's circle back. So that, that was a little bit of a tangent, but I think yeah. it was a really relevant tangent mm-hmm. for a lot of people who, who are going to be watching or listening to this episode. If it's about looking at it a different way mm-hmm. or if it's about preparing for the next time, what are some of the other scenarios that come up. We talked about maybe not being at your physical best. Mm-hmm. Not you mean leaving class ha- and saying not having performed at my best. It, it could be that, or okay. it could be that you stepped into class thinking you were at a hundred percent or even eighty percent. Yeah, and yeah. you were at less. I mean, the so cliche one. I'm going to turn this off because it's distracting. Yeah, both of us. The so cliche one, but that I genuinely believe in is a quote, bad day of training is better than a day of no training. I I know it's very cliche and everyone out there is probably rolling their eyes, Yep, but it's true. 
It is true. It, it If you're looking at it the right way, mm -hmm. and I think it's important to recognize that human beings and our development is rooted primarily in learning what not to do. It's about yeah. making mistakes. It's about, I don't like the word, but a lot of people do failures, yeah. failing. The better we get at a thing, it is because we are carving off things to not do. Yeah. If I'm a better driver mm -hmm. of vehicles, I've learned not to swerve, not to be distracted. Yeah. Yeah. I've learned where to put my hands. If I'm better as a, a combatant, a, a sparer, a fighter, I've learned, hey, I should keep my hands in a certain place. I should yep. use certain techniques when in, engaged with certain people in certain mm -hmm. contexts. Sometimes getting better is learning what not to do. And as we Absolutely. develop as martial artists, we do not generally put enough value on that. Yeah, yeah. And I... Uh... You know, so related in the same vein, and I believe, and I could be wrong on the specifics on this, but there was a, a, a an article I read once on Thomas Edison when he was inventing the light bulb, mm. that he was being interviewed for some newspaper, or whatever, and they said, "Oh, so you've you know you've blown up five hundred light bulbs, you haven't gotten it to work yet, you failed five hundred times," and his response was, "No, I've learned five hundred ways not to do something." Right. And I believe the number for Edison and light bulb is actually ten thousand. Yeah, I've, it's I've, it is an insane number. And that may not be exactly right. It's probably 9,000 and something. Mm. But I, the, the important part there and the reason that I, I kind of correct you mm. is this is one of the most important inventions of all time. Mm -hmm. And it required someone with insane persistence and recognition that there is a way to do this. Yeah. And so if there's a way to do that, there's a way to do whatever we're trying correct. to do within our training. He found lots of ways that didn't work. Okay. So you keep working until you find the one that does. Yep. Other things that create situations where we look back and say, I did not like the way this class went. For me, mm -hmm. if I have a bad class, nine times out of 10, it's my attitude going in. It's yeah. my inability to shed what happened during the day. Now, that doesn't happen to me as much anymore because I came up with something that was very, very simple, and it still blows me away how effective it is. I go in. I change up, I put on my belt, I close my eyes, mm -hmm. and I count to 10. Yep. It's that tiny little meditation. I know when I come out of my 10 count, I'm ready for class. Yeah. I mean, I like it. I mean, there are a lot of schools that start with a meditation in the beginning and mm -hmm. at the end. Um, and I think that can help mentally set yourself to, I mean, we talk about all the time that when, when you bow in for those schools that do that, mm -hmm. when you, when you, you know, step on the floor, you bow, that's supposed to be leaving everything else behind you. That's easier said than done. Like it sometimes is. taking that physical time to like, <sighs> okay, that can help. It's one of the reasons that I like putting on different clothing. Mm. I'm in a different space. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing different clothing. I'm using a different set of protocols, sometimes yep. different language, Yeah, working with different people on different things. That makes it far easier for me to take the whatever it was today and put it down over there and focus on what I'm doing for whatever that period of time is because it's still going to be there when I'm done. Yep. Yep. If I'm going to be here, if I'm going to train, I'm not going to be able to solve it while I'm doing it mm -hmm. unless the problem that's really stressing me out is – you know, I'm, my reverse punch sucks. I want to get better at it. You know, like. No, it's your hook punch. It is definitely my hook punch. It's your hook. It's gotten better, though. It's still going to be there. I yep. can always pick it up later. It can, it can still be the most consuming problem I've got mm -hmm. later. Yeah. Okay. And this is where, you know, again, post-class review, prep for next time. Recognizing that for almost all of us, we are happier when we've gone to class, when we've put in the time, no matter what it was we had to put down. You know what? I'm glad I got to clear my head for an hour. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And knowing that that's there makes it easier the next time you're feeling like, I, I have to go let this thing consume me instead of going to class. You know what? Sometimes putting it down and then picking it back up 
makes it easier to think about. Next time I have a class where, you know, I'm coming out of work and I'm, I'm upset with my boss or my coworker, I'm just going to go right to the, the class. Mm. I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to sit in the parking lot for 45 minutes and yeah. listen to an episode of martial arts radio or whatever, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to watch, you know, some movie, half a movie on my phone and best like the best. Yeah. Put probably not that because so many reasons why, why not to, um, but I'll interject here. I, yeah. I agree. Like even the classes where I've left and said, Oh, I, you know, I wish we had worked on this thing or whatever. I can't tell you the last time I went to a class and felt worse when I left than when I did when I went in, I yeah. always feel better after training. Even if it's not, even if we didn't work on what I wanted to work on, yeah. I still always feel better. Let's take one more example. And I think this is an important one. We've skewed a lot of what we're talking about to more experienced students. Mm -hmm. Let's go the other end. I felt like everything I did was wrong today. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're a beginner and maybe yep. you're a newer student. Absolutely. You forget terminology. Um, maybe the instructor asked you to demonstrate the form that you've been working on the last few classes and you can't remember it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or you blur it with another form or you, you know, you're sparring and um, you know, you're, you're a six foot two yellow belt and you're sparring with a 11 year old brown belt and you mm. kick her in the face and now she's bleeding Yeah, and you feel horrible, right? Like there are so many, or, or even you don't kick her in the face and she, she's bleeding. She beats you up. She's 11. That's yeah. You know, like she went quote unquote wins. Like she you, scores points on you, you and you're six, two and she's you 11. You feel like, like no matter what you did. Yep. Yeah, you're the the inverse of King Midas, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Not, you're, you're not turning stuff to gold. You're you're turning stuff into piles of poo. Yeah, yeah. Right? I've had classes like that. Mm -hmm. So what do we do there? Two things. How do you reframe? Are is there at least one thing you can look at and say, "Here's how I would handle this differently next time." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether it's you know the small small child taking you to task or not remembering the form, or not remembering the terminology. <coughs> there are things you can do to better prepare for that. Yep. And if nothing else, if there's nothing else you could have done to prepare, you are probably going to be less anxious given that same scenario if it were all to be repeated. Yep. And I would also encourage you to think of the entire training session. I do find it hard to believe, even a brand new beginner white belt, that you did every single thing wrong figure out we'll think of the class find out what you did do well because uh, again statistically i find it hard to believe that everything maybe you don't have the context to recognize it and you need to ask somebody who's a higher rank oh that's a great idea maybe too. you pull somebody aside and this is this is why and this is a, a kind of a thought to school owners i love when people start together there's no reason you can't have either peer buddies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or Kind of a, a big brother, big a sister, sister. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, hey, white belt, here's your blue belt friend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're going to check in with them. Yeah. They had somebody too. Mm -hmm. They're yeah, going to help you idea. through this, right? Great idea. And you give them a call or you shoot them a text and you're like, I felt like everything I did today was junk. I've had classes like that. Um, but you know what? You did this, this, and this better than you had last class. Did you even realize that? Mm. Oh, you know, I guess you're right. Exactly. There's always something you can hang your hat on. Mm -hmm. And the other half, so reframe, prepare. How do we prepare for that next class? Trust the process. If you're yeah. that new, you've got mm -hmm. to trust the process yep. that we've all been there. We've oh, all had those terrible classes. We've all walked out feeling like maybe I should just throw in the towel on this. <laughs> and we didn't. Mm -hmm. And now we're better. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Are there any other scenarios we should unpack? I, I feel like we've covered enough of enough I of them so. that people know where we're at. Yeah, no, I think so. It was good. Reframe what you did. Mm -hmm. How do you take that knowledge and apply it to the next, to the next time one. you train? Mm -hmm. So you don't make the same mistakes or have the same negative reaction. Yeah. You'll have plenty of other things to screw up. <laughs> You'll have plenty of other things to look at and go, oh. But over time, you make fewer mistakes. There are fewer things you do wrong. You have fewer things to look at. And mm. 
And that's called progress. And remember, it never gets easier. It just looks better. Th those of us that are in class, like if you're a beginner listening and you're like, oh, uh, you you know, it, 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 it's so much easier for you. No, it's not easier for us. It just looks better because we know how to do the it. The standards better. get higher. Yeah. There's so much. It's never there's, a, there's another episode we could do. Yeah. It doesn't get easier. It just, it just gets better. better. It looks better. Yeah. All right. What do you think? Did we cover this well? Is there stuff that you're thinking like, hey, Andrew, Jeremy, you guys completely missed this. Or, you know, I've had this experience. I know what it's like to feel like a complete loser coming and, out of class. And how'd you work through it? And how did you work through it? I think that's really important. So if you want to give us feedback, there are a few things you can do. We have a Facebook group. Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio behind the scenes. You can find it. You can find it referenced from whistlekick.com. You can also go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com and comment on the post. Almost nobody does that anymore, but mm. you can. But if you have feedback you want to share with us, or maybe it's private, you don't want us to share things, you can email us, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. I am Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Our social media everywhere you can imagine is at whistlekick. And if you want to help us out, we've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. You don't have your sign. I looked I over. Like, I'm so conditioned for that. I was like, <laughs> I was going to give you Did space. he bring it? Well, <laughs> that would have been funny. Um, books on Amazon. And if you want the whole list, whistlekick.com slash family. That brings us to the end. So until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great, great day. day.